Well, companies around the world are trying to keep their employees happy through not only offering mental health supports like wellness days and allowing claims for therapy, but also taking care of their staff while they're at work. From free meals to areas to relax and unwind, these are just some of the ways they're making the office a more welcoming space. As workplace stress rises, companies are investing heavily in on-site mental health services like therapists and mindfulness programs. The goal seems clear, support employee well-being and boost productivity. Better mental health means greater employee engagement, more productivity, and ultimately better profits and greater overall organizational performance. But not all is as it seems. Behind the positive PR, serious questions remain about how effective these interventions truly are. As someone who has felt the crushing weight of unrealistic work demands, I was skeptical these surface-level solutions could truly address deep-seated issues. And my that. In this video, we'll cut through the hype to objectively examine both the potential benefits and limitations of the booming corporate therapy industry. The corporate therapy industry has experienced explosive growth over the past decade as work-related stress rises to concerning levels. What started as basic employee assistance programs offering referrals to outside therapists has transformed into full-fledged on-site mental health clinics at some major companies. Employees are at work. They're not taking sick days. They're not having to go do things like take time off to go to the doctor's office. We have an on-site clinic here. According to surveys, the portion of large firms providing mental health benefits nearly doubled between 2013 and 2020. Industries hit hardest by anxiety, like tech and finance, have led the way, with names like Apple, Google, and JP Morgan pioneering in house services. Corporate providers offer everything from individual counseling sessions to company wide wellness initiatives. Beyond traditional talk therapy, common alternatives include meditation classes to manage stress, coaching on balancing work and personal lives, and support groups for handling grief or change. We, as a wellness team, try to help you manage your energy, manage your ability through fitness, through nutrition, through different kind of psychological and emotional coaching programs. We want you to be the best you you can be. Some employers take wellness a step further with therapy animals, massage therapists, or acupuncturists on rotation. Digital options have also exploded, extending services via telehealth portals for those reluctant to use company-sponsored care. The variety and accessibility of options reflect employers' attempts to destigmatize therapy and appeal to diverse employee needs. With mental health care more in vogue than ever, it's unsurprising that corporations spending big on emotional support for staffers has become standard operating procedure at multinational powerhouses and smaller businesses alike. But is this rapidly scaled expansion of corporate therapy truly driven by benevolent interests? Well, um... Big question. Many companies now offer mental health services in-house, citing several compelling reasons. One of the most important reasons is the recognition of the increasing personal and economic toll of untreated mental illness. With conditions such as depression and anxiety on the rise, employers understand the value of destigmatizing therapy. The health condition that had the biggest impact on ability to function at work and lost productivity was depression. By making counseling accessible and even encouraging its use, companies hope to normalize treatment. They aim to reassure employees that seeking help won't harm their career prospects and help them support co-workers in need. Some cite this shift away from stigma as motivation in and of itself. Businesses have come to realize that employee well-being has a direct impact on their bottom line. The costs of reduced productivity due to factors such as stress and burnout can reach billions of dollars annually. Stress is impacting the economy in a massive way. What if I told you that by some estimates, the cost of work-related stress in the U.S. is close to $300 billion annually? As a result, companies are investing in programs that aim to improve employee morale and engagement, which can lead to increased retention, less absenteeism from health-related issues, and improved focus while on the job. Some even offer wellness perks tied to bonuses or promotion opportunities. Team, we got a closer look at the future of the workplace, from sabbatical leave to wellness stipends, even daycare for your parents. According to the Wall Street Journal, companies are adding new benefits and perks to keep the employees happy. With ethical, public, and financial incentives at play, 
It's easy to see why the corporate wellness industry has become a booming sector. But is there more driving this trend beyond these factors? Good question. Corporate wellness programs are designed to support employees, but there are concerns about their ability to bring about meaningful long-term change, comprehensively addressing mental health poses, complex systemic challenges that shallow solutions may not be able to fully solve. Unfortunately, stigma continues to discourage some from seeking help as they fear it may harm their reputation or career prospects. Fine. Services are often brief and sporadic, making it difficult for employees to follow through. Will occasional seminars or sessions truly be effective in treating deeply rooted issues caused by chronic workplace stressors? Moreover, there is a risk that superficial treatments may not take into account the cultural context of organizations. Challenges arising from unmanageable workloads, lack of feedback mechanisms, or toxic management styles may require interventions at the systems level rather than solely individual coping strategies. If companies prioritize publicity over meaningful reform when implementing wellness initiatives, the relief they provide may only be temporary. The risk of burnout, disengagement, and high turnover will persist in the long run. To avoid this, companies must examine and address the root causes of poor mental health in their organization. Merely treating the symptoms without fixing the underlying problems is not enough. Genuinely ask how your employees are doing. Actively listen. Show kindness, empathy, compassion, and understanding without judgment. For companies to achieve real and transformative impact, they must commit to sustained and data-driven evolution. However, if they only invest in mental health programs as public relations tactics rather than strategic imperatives, they may not see significant improvements. Implementing initiatives carefully and making operational changes in tandem is crucial to avoid corporate therapy becoming an empty promise that fails to resolve underlying tensions. So the idea generally being that, you know, we're giving these people tools to deal with sort of uh, the stresses and difficulties of the workplace, but, uh, but I think what, it might, might, what might be a more sort of effective approach, right, is to actually address the root problem, right? Namely, what's actually causing those stresses, what's causing that burnout, what's causing people to have to seek these tools in the first place, right? And oftentimes those are actually rooted within the organization itself, right? So actually restructuring organizations, rethinking these things, I think can be super effective to ensure lasting mental health improvements and enhance the quality of work life, companies must adopt a holistic and multi-pronged approach that addresses workplace culture through policy, process, and interpersonal dynamics. To be constantly checking in and checking the temperature of the culture, and the moment you see a fruit fly flies in and it lands on the Scooby, you immediately take action. It's important to continuously evaluate both the intended and unintended outcomes of these initiatives to ensure their effectiveness. Keep checking them, keep looking. Corporate wellness programs are designed to promote the well-being of employees. However, some valid concerns need to be addressed before implementing such programs. These concerns include issues related to privacy, coercion, and the possibility of doing more harm than good. Most employers are still operating under an outdated and even destructive idea that workplace wellness is about pressuring employees to make different health decisions in their personal lives or incentivizing employees through perks to stay at work all hours of the day, even past the point of burnout. One significant challenge is maintaining confidentiality in a workplace where colleagues interact daily. Although such programs are protected by HIPAA, full anonymity can be difficult to guarantee which may discourage some employees from disclosing their issues openly. Another concern is that employees may feel coerced into participating in the programs if metrics like performance reviews or bonuses are linked to therapy usage. When leadership sends mixed messages about services being optional versus recommended, some employees may feel pressured to disclose their private struggles prematurely rather than at their own pace. Over 50 AARP says federal regulations on those programs could compromise privacy and make people vulnerable to discrimination. Therefore, it is important to take proper steps towards destigmatizing these programs to alleviate any reputation concerns. Several concerns arise when wellness coordinators are tasked with counseling duties that fall outside their expertise or training. For instance, organizations need to ensure that they follow ethical standards and engage properly credentialed practitioners 
to avoid potential harm due to inadequate or mismatched treatment. Moreover, if therapy is viewed simply as a quick fix rather than a catalyst for sustainable, deep-rooted cultural change, there is a risk that organizations will miss opportunities to implement policy or workflow changes that could prevent future issues from arising. In addition, constantly reminding employees about the available support can potentially worsen work-life balance by normalizing an always-on mentality and blurring the boundaries between personal and professional responsibilities. This can increase the risk of burnout, particularly if employees feel unable to detach from work-related stress. Given these valid concerns, organizations must commit to rigorous, evidence-based planning and ongoing evaluation to ensure that their wellness initiatives have the intended positive impact and do not have any unintended negative consequences on privacy, choice, productivity, or well-being. My employees get health care. Even with these very obvious concerns, corporations have responded to the growing prioritization of mental health. Committed to a uh, foundation principles where employee welfare is paramount. And so we take it upon ourselves to have the responsibility to make sure that our employees have the best access to mental health care. By developing multifaceted programs to support employee well being, we can't tell if it's for profit or genuine care for the well being of its workers. What we do know is that more of these programs keep springing up and it's doing more harm than good. Don't get me wrong, it's creating the right awareness for mental well being, which is great. But the approach and execution of the problem are just being handled nonchalantly. Because at the end of the day, what we have are people who identify with a certain mental issue and use it as an excuse for their actions, but aren't willing to put in the work to change, some companies establish full-fledged health clinics that are staffed by licensed therapists working daily on premises. It's a known fact that not all issues require traditional talk therapy and for stress reduction. Mindfulness practices in the form of yoga, meditation, and breathing classes held during lunch or before meetings are not always the solution to work-life crises. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching, and consider watching our other videos right here.